Hello and welcome to the episode 169 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we have a birthday, the first of several sold-out shows in Sydney and a day of interviews in London. Let's start with the birthday of James Paul McCartney, born on the 18th of June 1942 at the Liverpool Walton Hospital. It seems Paul wasn't the prettiest of the babies. Jim McCartney, his father, years later commented, He looked awful. I couldn't get over it. Horrible. He had one eye open and he just squawked all the time. They held him up and he looked like a piece of red meat. When I got home I cried, the first time for years and years. But the next day he looked more human. He turned out a lovely baby in the end. Heard that bit about the McCartney's musical past? No, that means that you're listening to the basic, free version of this podcast. There is a deluxe version with added depth on several stories and plenty more details about the four you love. You can get it by heading to www.simonmas.com support where you can find plenty of information on how to support my efforts by buying deluxe versions of my content or buying my albums. There are also plenty more ways in which you can support me, all outlined on the website. Thank you for your kind help and to make this and more music-related content possible. Let's move on with the show with another Paul McCartney story. In 1956, Paul received a trumpet for his 14th birthday, a present from his father. Jim was more than happy to encourage his son to develop his interest in music and decided to give him an instrument that was quite popular in 1950s England. Paul loved it and stuck to it for a time, but then he realized that he couldn't sing and play the trumpet at the same time, and so he asked his father if he could swap the instrument for a guitar. Jim agreed and Paul got an acoustic zenith, his first stringed instrument. On the day of Paul's 18th birthday in 1960, the Silver Beatles, still drumless, performed at the Grosvenor Ballroom in Wallasey. The band included George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice and Stu Sutcliffe on bass. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles were still on the stage of the Top Ten Club in Hamburg, West Germany, for their ongoing second residency in town. By this time, they had acquired the drummer, Pete Best. In 1963, Paul McCartney decided to celebrate his 21st birthday with a party in the back garden of the house of one of his aunts, Gin. It was a big affair, with all the Beatles present. By this time, Pete Best had been substituted with Ringo Starr. Several friends, including Billy J. Kramer, The Shadows and some of the staff of the cover, and with the foremost playing a live set. Paul had offered to pay them their full regular fee, but the band refused and in the end they performed for free. The joyful occasion was marred by John Lennon's assault of Bob Wooler the cover DJ and master of ceremonies. Bob had incautiously joked about John's holiday in Barcelona with Beatles manager Brian Epstein, calling it a honeymoon. John, who had quite a few drinks already, jumped on Wooler and gave him a black eye and several bruised ribs before he was dragged off. Epstein drove Wooler to the hospital and John was taken home by his wife Cynthia. The local press got wind of the story and the Daily Mirror, a national paper, ran it, much to the dismay of Lennon, who was mortified after he had sobered up. The injury of his inexcusable behavior was added to the insult of the fact that Bob Wooler was a very inoffensive person and a dear friend of the Beatles who had done a lot for them in their Liverpool years. Beatles historian Mark Lewison maintains that the Beatles drove back to London in the evening, 
to prepare for their radio recording engagement on the 19th of June, but in the light of the fight between Lennon and Wooler, this seems unlikely. You can find a recount of the Barcelona holiday in episode 118 of What A Fab Day. In 1964, the Beatles returned to Sydney to play six shows in three nights at the City Stadium, in front of 12,000 people on each occasion. A film crew captured part of one of these performances on film, producing Beatles at the Stadium, the short film featured in local cinemas from the 25th of June. These performances were troubled by a new twist in Beatlemania. After a random remark made by George Harrison, claiming that the Fabs enjoyed eating jelly babies, the band got bombarded with the sweets during the performances, to the point that they had to interrupt their shows several times to ask for the public not to throw anything at them, invariably without much success. The day was concluded with a party for Paul's 22nd birthday at the band's hotel, the Sheraton, with 17 girls who had won the Daily Mirror's Why I Would Like to Be a Guest at the Beatles Birthday Party competition. The 18th of June 1965 started with a mixing session in Abbey Road, with mono mixes of I've Just Seen a Face, I'm Down, It's Only Love, Act Naturally, Wait and Help, completed between 10 am and 12.30 pm, and stereo mixes of all the songs but Help, completed between 12.30 and 1.30 pm. An entire hour in the afternoon, 2.30 to 3.30 pm, was devoted to complete a satisfactory stereo mix for Help. George Martin and Norman Smith edited John Lennon's vocals so that there had been some speculation that they had used a different take for the stereo version. It was not so, as shown by the EMI official documents of the session. This session, by the way, concluded the work for the Help album. While the Help stereo mix was being completed, the band arrived at the NEMS Enterprise office to tape an interview for the BBC European service to promote the band's imminent European tour. The interview, recorded from 3.30 pm, was aired on the 23rd of June between 11 and 11.30 pm, Greenwich Meridian time, for the Londra Ultima Hora show. After this interview, John Lennon reached the Lime Grove Studios across London to record a live appearance on BBC One's Tonight, broadcast between 7 and 7.35 pm. After replying to several questions from host Kenneth Alsop to promote a Spaniard in the work, John was featured reading two extracts from his new book. Let's close the episode with three events happened on the 18th of June 1968. For a start, George Harrison, Ringo Starr, their wives and Beatles assistant Mal Evans returned to London after their stay in the United States. John Lennon spent the day preparing for the premiere of the stage version of In His Own Right, directed by Victor Spinetti at the Old Vic in London. John's arrival with Yoko Ono caused a stir among the press. The end of John's marriage to Cynthia was not of public domain yet, and allegedly John upset some reporters, asking him where his wife was, by simply answering, I don't know. George Harrison and Ringo Starr were present at the premiere, while Paul McCartney chose to attend the opening of another play, starring his girlfriend, Jane Asher. Talking about Paul, being alone in his Apple office, he decided to celebrate his 26th birthday with several fans, with an impromptu lunch at Apple. With this frantic day already hinting at the future breakup of the band, we close this episode of What A Fab Day. Tomorrow, we'll feature a shocking confession. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love!